Well, the Wayne Trains got off to a brilliant start in the Premier League. Two games to two goals. Hopefully that continues today as we take on Manchester United at Old Trafford and also have our first game in the Carabao Cup at Brighton. But I might need to get there in a different mode of transport to the rest of the team because I've upset them. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it after the intro. Episode number 12 of the Wayne Train here on Sean Does FM with Plymouth Argyle. I hope you're doing well and as I said coming up today we take on Manchester United in the Premier League and also Brighton in our first game in the Carabao Cup. Also we might have transferred deadline day albeit we have been forced into a move before then that will probably mean nothing does happen then. So be looking forward to that coming up in today's episode as well as some dressing room dynamic issues. Then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up. On the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated but in today's episode we did recap the transfers that we did do heading in to our second season of the save the first one in the Premier League also took on Bournemouth in our first Premier League game if you missed that one I'll leave a link to it. Over in the top right corner just played one game since then and it was away at Brentford and unfortunately we didn't get out of the tunnel for the first half because we were well and truly on the back foot for the opening 45 minutes of this game. Long ball over the top they're only 20 minutes in and Sade puts that one away to give Brentford a 1-0 lead early and unfortunately only about 10 minutes off the back of that Ruiz there gets involved yet again starts to make his way for just jogs for our defence and with a bit of help from the inside of the post puts that one away to give him a 2-0 lead. But then, in the second half, we got a penalty and the Wayne Train picked up his second goal in the Premier League. But unfortunately, only about 10 minutes later, Brentford, they did make it 3-1. And really, this did put the game to bed. Some good short passing and Sade did just get in behind there and puts that one past Cooper with a nice little dinky finish. We did grab a late goal back when going full on to attack. Ben Wayne actually picks up the assist here. Ian Paveda does well to beat his man and David Rayer in goal. He's gone back there after his loan at Arsenal last season. And unfortunately... A free to defeat that first half, as you can tell by that XG match story, was definitely costly. Showed some good heart in the second half to get back into that game, but unfortunately, that two goal deficit at half time too much for us to overcome, and we do suffer a defeat in our second game of the season, albeit away from home, not too unexpected. So it does mean at the moment we are smack bang mid table in the Premier League, albeit still early days. Hopefully, though, we can keep a good gap on those teams who are struggling early days down around. The relegation zone, so unfortunately a bit of a bad result since you were last here and also off the back of that, we upset the team. Now, the only bit of transfer business I was planning to do around deadline day was if Julio Pligazello did have a big come in for him being in the last year of his contract, but then the team came to me and they were upset because we didn't have enough defensive midfielders. We've got four of them, so I guess if we do get a suspension, that might be an issue. We'd actually have a talk to them and manage to allay those concerns, but still, it did dent our club atmosphere and our managerial support for a little while. So because of that, I have used the remainder of our transfer budget to put a bid in for an extra defensive midfielder, especially because we do still have some room in our squad here at Plymouth Argyle. So because of that, we've put in a bid for Daniel Phillips out of St. Johnston in Scotland, 500k and 10k a week. It does mean that wage budget is going to be a little bit dicey once he does come here, but he is a good solid squad player, B plus rating from the scouts, two and a half star current ability, three and a half star potential, is quite happy to be a fringe player and does fit within our budget. So that is probably going to be our last bit of transfer business for this window here at Plymouth Argyle, unless something does happen around transfer deadline day for someone like Julio in the last year of his contract. We do play Ipswich Town on transfer deadline day, so I think we'll cover that off if anything does happen in tomorrow's episode. So hopefully that signing of Daniel Phillips might just help those dynamics go up a little bit more, and we can try and keep ourselves mid-table in the Premier League in this first game of today's episode before we do focus on Brighton in the Carabao Cup. But this is going to be a tough one. We take on a Manchester United team still managed by Eric Ten Hag that have won both of their games so far, and it is at Old Trafford. They've beaten Everton 3-0 and West Ham 2-0. 
hopefully we can put up a bit more of a fight than that but it's fair to say not expecting us to do too well in this game or in the second one it'll be interesting to see how we do get on against two of the better albeit not the elite teams I'd say in the Premier League and we might be about to hit our first real patch of poor form here at Plymouth Argyle albeit not too unexpected a little bit frustrating the Brentford result but these two are going to be a bit tough before we do get stuck into the early stages of September where things do look a little bit easier two games against teams at home park who we came up alongside from the championship last season but first up we'll take on Manchester United in the Premier League still no injury concerns which is good so hopefully that will be the case as well by the end of today's episode and because of that lack of injuries it does mean we can put out exactly the same squad that we did in that first game in yesterday's episode albeit Tony Springett does make his way back onto the bench over Nestory or in Kunda, the young Tanzanian who we did sign out of Adelaide United we'll just make sure there that we're easing off tackles on Bruno Fernandes don't want to go in strong that usually is a bit of a red card magnet instruction but hopefully we can do a decent job here obviously not expecting a win but if we could pick up a point maybe that would be quite encouraging and hopefully back up that good performance in that first game of the season in yesterday's episode we were well and truly battered Bournemouth albeit a bit fortunate that we did score three goals with that funny own goal that they did put in the back of net we definitely deserved a win from that game and backed it up with a decent comeback at Brentford but unfortunately just fell a bit short and lost three too off the back of that poor first half performance hopefully here we can perform a bit better in the first half and keep things more even going into the last 45 minutes where it does feel like with this Gagan press tactic we do tend to perform well off the back of the first half hour not too sure why that's definitely something that I have noticed not just in this save but back on FM23 last year with a couple of teams that we did use this Gagan press with it did just take a while for us to work our way into games but unfortunately a highlight here immediately from the kickoff and Man United are on the ball they keep that one there despite a good tackle from Farias and now Anthony is on the ball he finds Hoyland with a good early chance puts it away but thankfully I'm pretty sure he was offside the referee there at the far side I think he's put his flag out or if he hasn't it did look like it might be offside indeed it is we did just toy as well with going to a standard defensive line in that Brentford game seeing as they were getting in behind our defense a little bit easily that might be something we have to do here but now down the other end of Vakundo Farias taking three kicks this season trust to put that one top right corner unfortunately can't quite hit the target interesting to see he's taken that over from Morgan Whitaker who did a pretty good job for us last season I think it's fair to say but shortly off the back of that lots of highlights early and it is Manchester United who keep the ball from that goal kick I believe it was now the Butcher Martinez is in possession takes his time picks out Casemiro long ball over the top and it is going to find here Marcus Rashford Kesler Hayden bit poor there defensively we try and tightly mark him it falls there to bitch to it but thankfully he blasts that one over the bar big chance there for him to find that right corner thankfully bit too much on that one and already I'm just noticing the getting in behind our defense a little bit easily there with some balls over the top so because of that we might try a standard defensive line for the rest of this game obviously we were decent in terms of our pace and our stamina in the championship last season not too sure if that's the case in the Premier League so going back to a standard defensive line might not be the worst idea but Man United are on the attack yet again that time from a corner thankfully Hoyland puts that one over the bar from a tight angle but lots of highlights early now coming up to the 20 minute mark and we're going to try and make our way out of defense we eventually get that one forward to Morgan Whitaker but slow on the ball and Luke Shaw wins that one back for United but thankfully we get it back there through Buckley off of Bruno Fernandes now a chance for us here to do something on the counter attack Callum Wright makes his way down the left hand side into the final third back in there for Buckley ball over the top looking for Whitaker unfortunately can't quite get his head on the end of that one does get beaten in the air but thankfully poor pass there from Rashford now we do get in behind Farias tries to square that one for the Wayne train but unfortunately good block there by one of the United defenders to keep it at nil all but we are showing a little bit of fight here early getting a couple of shots off which is nice we put this one far post unfortunately Reese Williams can't quite get on the end of that one but another chance for us here from a set piece hopefully we can do a decent job from these this year with Williams Gibson and of course Greaves being quite good aerial threats now the Wayne train goes down there that looked like a penalty but apparently it's not and a chance there for United to do something on the counter attack unfortunately Whitaker picks up a yellow card for that foul which is a bit frustrating off the back of what just happened down the other end it looked like there that the Wayne train might have been brought down inside the box so a potential penalty there but unfortunately does not get blown we'll just adjust some opposition instructions here and get back into the action still at nil all 
Graves is down to a red heart. Hopefully he can bounce back from that before half time and he is starting to. So I think we'll leave him on for now. Maybe he needs to come off at half time. But as I say that, back down to a red heart. I think it's a safe option here to take him off. Ryan Fredericks can come on for him. So not ideal making a sub due to injury there inside the first half, albeit no injury icon. So hopefully that won't be too serious. He can feature in our next couple of games, especially at one in the Premier League against Ipswich Town. That could be quite a big one, even though I am planning to play that one off camera. But we did play Ipswich Town quite a bit last season in the Championship. But we are on the attack here, just shy of halftime. Faria squares that one. It finds Morgan Whitaker, who will put it away. And someone gets the run of play. I think we're going to take here a 1-0 lead into the sheds at Old Trafford, albeit the referee is checking for VAR. I'm pretty sure that took a big deflection from a United defender, but it's still being called for offside. Apparently it is Whitaker as well. So this will be interesting. I'm sure that this pass from Farias took a big deflection. And even then, not too sure if Whitaker's offside by that much, but unfortunately, a bit of big team bias there, I think, from VAR, and it will still be nil all going in to half time once we eventually get there with five minutes of added time. Also, the Wayne train picks up a late yellow card as well. So unfortunately, might be getting him off of the rails here at halftime just to make sure we don't pick up a red card. So we're going to take off all these players who are on yellow. So it does mean Sebastian Hausner can come on for Lewis Gibson. Also Ian Paveda for Morgan Whitaker. who well, unfortunately, had that goal ruled out. Also, it will be the Icelandic striker, Andre Lucas Goodjohnson, who will come on for the Wayne train at halftime. Yet again, we'll adjust some opposition instructions. But to be fair, wouldn't mind a point here from Old Trafford. That's a decent result. Would certainly take that off the back of that prior loss to Brentford off the back of a poor first half this time. Haven't been too bad. Certainly looks like we've been a bit more solid defensively since going to that standard defensive line. So that might be something we need to implement for some games in the Premier League this season. Not too sure if we need to do it against the teams that are in and around us, as we showed yesterday with that 3-1 opening day win over Bournemouth. Now, we do have a yellow card here to Fredericks. Was thinking about getting him to ease off tackles, but that might not be the best idea, seeing as United... Could be quite lethal down that side, but that's a bit of a frustration off the back of that injury to Graves in the first half. But early highlight here to United, and they start to get on the front foot. Anthony on a yellow card just jogs his way through our defence, and now Hausner brings him down fresh off the bench. That is a stone cold penalty. Anthony is absolutely making sure the referee knows about it too, rolling around like a little crybaby. But this is definitely going to be a penalty here. Hausner has brought him down. The penalty gets awarded. Let's see if he gets up off the back of that. Of course he does, and it's a chance here for United to take an early lead. In the second half, it's going to be Bruno Fernandes, as per usual, to try and put this one away. He sends Cooper the wrong way and buries it bottom left corner, and Bruno Fernandes already picks up his third goal this season off the back of that. We will get Fredericks to ease off tackles, but also chuck him onto support, so hopefully we can get on the front foot a bit more like we did at times last season, and we were trying to get a goal back in games, but unfortunately, it's from the penalty spot where Man United do score, and that's definitely something we can't afford to do too much against these teams from the Premier League this season. Off the back of that as well, we'll chuck Paveda onto attack. And now John Buckley on a 6.2 has picked up a yellow card, so with our last sub, Tom Bischoff, can come on for him. Also, we'll just tell our guys to go a bit wider in attack as well. That's another thing that worked quite well for us in the championship last season when we were in search of goals alongside chucking the left back onto support and the right winger on to attack, but unfortunately, before those changes can come through, there is a highlight here starting with a goal kick to Man United. Hopefully, they might struggle here to make their way out from the back, but with 25 minutes left, unfortunately, they do find themselves one the lap off the back of that penalty given away from Hausner. Off the back of that, though, good work from Buckley to win that for us. A little bit held to scale to be a poor pass from right, but thankfully, we do keep position. And now is Cullen right back on the ball, and hopefully, we can mount an attack. Now it's Hausner. Plays that one back to Randall. Hopefully Hausner here can make up for that penalty. Nice ball over the top though for Cullen Wright inside the box. We'll screw that one. For good Johnson. Big chance there for the big Icelandic striker to head that one home. But unfortunately comes off the post. Definitely bet Onana. That is our best chance so far in the game. But unfortunately he can't put it away off the back of that. Yet another yellow card. But unfortunately can't do anything. And we might even go attacking for the last 20 minutes of this game. And also go back to a higher defensive line. The one thing that is a bit of a bugbear with that standard defensive line is Bruno Fernandes nearly curves that one top left corner. Thankfully, Cooper comes up with a good save, and the encouragement does mean that highlight does stop. 
but we are a lot more better at taking wise with that higher defensive line. So that's a bit of an issue that we could have this season. We we'll have to just juggle that defensive line a little bit. But into the last 10 minutes, and Bischoff with a free kick now tries to put that one top left corner. Very similar to what Morgan Whitaker did for us a couple of times last season. But unfortunately, good save that time from Onana and goal to keep it 1-0 to Man United. And off the back of that, we do have a front. But unfortunately, Bischoff there gets a bit tangled up with one of the United players and a chance on here to do something on the counter attack. It's a bit helter-skelter there. Unfortunately, lose the ball out there briefly to Hoyland. But thankfully, we do get it back. And now Cooper... We'll play that one out to Williams. We switch sides and the yellow colored Helsner starts to make his way forward strongly as well towards the opposition half. He's on one big adventure a la Jean Matib. But the pass is poor, so a chance here for United to do something on the counter-attack. Marcus Rashford starts to make his way towards the edge of the box. Nice ball there for Hoyland. Thankfully, it comes off the post. It finds Ganacho. Really poor defensive effort there. But thankfully, it does go out. For a goal kick, nearly gifting United a 2-0 lead there, but thankfully still only 1-0, so we might get a chance here to try and grab an equaliser off the back of that too. We will chuck Fredericks onto a tick, so now going full out attack for the last couple of minutes of this game, but we've definitely been second best in terms of stats, but a bit unfortunate that that goal to Morgan Whitaker did get ruled out in the first half. That was a controversial call, and it could have made a difference. Now Bischoff there tries to grab an equaliser, unfortunately though, it gets well blocked by the United defence. And now Garnett Cho is well and truly in behind here. Tight angle, but thankfully Helsner this time makes a good tackle. Sola squares that one though nicely for Bidstrup, but yet again, skies that one. So he's certainly a player we don't need to worry about in terms of attack. But unfortunately, despite going very attacking for the later stages of that game, we do suffer a defeat, albeit I think we put up a fairly decent fight there at Old Trafford. Definitely could have come away from that one with a draw. If that Morgan Whitaker goal did get allowed, that was a close call, especially considering the ball from Farias did take a pretty big touch from a United defender. But unfortunately, Sebastian Hausner gave away a penalty pretty early into his time on the field in the second half. And that is the difference maker. It was just a penalty, which does mean that Man United, they do pick up a 1-0 win. I think we'll tell the guys, not that bad an effort. We definitely need to keep an eye out on dynamics, especially off the back of that issue with defensive midfield depth apparently, but unfortunately, we suffer a 1-0 defeat first up in today's episode. Back-to-back -back losses in the Premier League. Hopefully, we can turn it around when we take on Brighton in the Carabao Cup. And in fact, before we do go forward to that Brighton game first up, that you can see there because we picked up seven yellow cards, a £25,000 fine. That's not ideal because our finances at the moment, not that great. So that's a bit of an issue, especially because as well as that, we are getting our extra defensive midfielder in in Daniel Phillips as we ran through before. £500,000 and 10 k a week to be a fringe player. Hopefully that might just sort out that issue. The players head off the back of that Brentford game. And we'll see if we can pick up a win now in the Carabao Cup. We'll come back shortly to take on Brighton. And we are back about to take on Brighton in the second round of the Carabao Cup. Of course, last season we actually made our way through the fourth round of this competition off the back of wins over Coventry and Chelsea. But this time... A tough task first up as we do take on Brighton at home. And that is the Brighton team who are still managed by Roberto De Zerbi. To be fair, most managers in the Premier League do still have their jobs. One exception, I think, is Tottenham these days. They are managed by Hans Flick instead of Ange Postacoglu, who I believe is at Sunderland down in League One, which is a bit interesting. But we do take on Roberto De Zerbi's men. And so far, they've got off to a decent start in the Premier League. They're an eighth off the back of wins over Tottenham and Everton, but in between that, a 3-2 loss at Newcastle. It's kind of similar to us in those first two games, but they actually won their last one away at Goodison Park, but hopefully we might be able to get the job done over them here, despite the fact that we are rotating a little bit, just giving some of our cup players some game time, in particular, Connor Hazard and Golan also. Just a bit of a rest to some of our players who can be a bit more injury prone than others who are in our squad. So that does mean as well as Connor Hazard coming in that we've got Hausner at centre back in place of Lewis Gibson. Also Tom Bischoff for John Buckley and Nikola Ilyev in place of Facundo Farias. So those are the players who can get a little bit injury prone in our first choice 11. Also Richard Elise and Julio do come onto the bench so we can give the likes of Ryan Fredericks and Lewis Gibson the rest in this cup game. Hopefully won't prove too costly, albeit with this being our first season in the Premier League and we're a team expected to be fighting for survival. Getting out of the cup early might not be the worst, although the board do expect us to make the third round in the Carabao Cup. So ideally, we'd win this game 
And off the back of that, we can maybe start to bin off this competition a little bit more. We definitely want to focus a bit more, I think, on the FA Cup because there's a lot more money involved in that competition as we discovered last year with our Carabao Cup run, seeing as we did get on a little bit of a decent one. But it looks like Brighton there are taking this competition pretty seriously. So this might be a bit of an ugly day at the office for us. Hopefully those players who are coming in can do a decent job. Of course, Tom Bischoff, actually a player with quite a high star rating, even though he is behind John Buckley in the picking order here at Plymouth Argyle, the young German. But early stages here in Brighton, they do have a throw. Ferguson and Lampy linking up down that left-hand side. Thankfully, Hazard will come out and claim that one. Of course, one of his advantages over Mike Cooper in goal is that he's got very good aerial reach as the Northern Irish international. He'll pump that one deep looking for Morgan Whitaker, but unfortunately can't win it. But thankfully, Kesla Hayden will tidy things up. He finds Aliyev, but unfortunately, a little bit sloppy on the ball there. And Jao Gomez starts to get Brighton going forward here in the first highlight of this Carabao Cup clash. Now, Pedro makes his way again down that right-hand side, back in there for Tariq Lamptey. Goes back now to Don Tass. They're taking their time here, building up uh, Brighton. Unfortunately, with their first shot of the game, Anderson Taliska will bury that one bottom left corner. And it's a poor start, kind of similar to the Brentford game that we did play before today's episode. Also, Connor Hazard, a stub finger. That might explain why he didn't pull out a save on that one, but Anderson Taliska rockets that one past him. In fact, that might actually be where that slight injury has come from. Unfortunately, we're probably going to try and leave Hazard on for the remainder of this game. Hopefully, it's not too serious. We go 1-0 down early. Hopefully, we can find a way back into this one sooner rather than later, but not a good start with some rotated players in this Carabao Cup clash. And we do now find Randall, but loose touch and Matoma can tidy that one up there for Brighton. They go back to Verbruggen in goal and start to get it forward again to the goal scorer and Anderson Taliska. Now Dontas up to Evan Ferguson, one of the more promising strikers and football manager. And so far, Brighton certainly the team who are all over us in the first couple of minutes of this game. Now Zhao Gomez yet again does start to get in behind. Absolutely bamboozles. Our man there down that right-hand side in Kesler Hayden. Starts to cut his away inside the box. Tries to put that one in for Taliska. And thankfully that header just goes over the bar off the back of that. We'll try and encourage our guys. And now a free kick. And we're taking a short technique. This time a foul on one of our players there from Zia Gomez. I think Whitaker, he's gone down there justifiably so. And it's a chance here hopefully for the Wayne train to get us all square. And thankfully that is the case for our first real time on the ball. And we do win a penalty in the Wayne train hopefully. Can put this one away. Not the greatest penalty taker in terms of attributes, but so far doing a good job. He puts that one away and makes it one also. Hopefully, from here we can start to build up some momentum and maybe pull off a slight upset here in our first game in the Carabao Cup, but very similar to the Bruno Fernandez penalty in that United game. He sends the goalkeeper the wrong way and buries it nicely that time in the bottom right corner. So thankfully, just our one shot so far, we do hit the target from the spot. And off the back of that, we're actually on the attack again here through a throw. Lots of highlights here early in this game. Looking for Callum Wright at the far post. Unfortunately, can't find him. And now Jao Pedro starts to make his way for yet again so far. Looking quite dangerous in this game. He just tries to beat Bischoff there. Fortunately, can't. And Jacob Graves can tidy things up for us. The former Hull City man these days. Our starting left back now, Halsner. He takes his time, plays that one back to Hazard in goal with that stub finger, hopefully, that has recovered. And now Reese Williams this time goes on a bit of an adventure a la Hausner in that previous game. Now Kesler Hayden inside the box. What can he do here? Looks to take on the shot himself. Unfortunately, though, it's a weak one and it does fall safely into the arms of the Brighton goalkeeper. So one all here coming up to halfway through the first half. But thankfully, starting to show a bit more life here off the back of that penalty, which Ben Wayne did put away, albeit... As I say that now, Tariq Lamptey does have a throw in here for Brighton Taliska. The goal scorer starts to make his way onto the edge of the box. Don Tass, nice ball over the top there. Thankfully, Cullen Wright will deal with that, but it goes out to Tariq Lamptey. He puts this one far post. It somehow falls there for Matoma, who will bury that one. Kesla Hayden, I think, missed the header indeed. He did, according to the commentary, and you can't do that with Matoma there at the far post. He is far too good and puts that one away. Also, frustratingly, Callum Wright just gives that one straight back to Lamptey. Bit of a poor clearing header. Don't know why he just didn't try and put it out for another corner. Sometimes it does feel like defenders in FM can be a little bit silly, albeit to be fair, Callum Wright 
not actually a defender. And Brighton do get their lead back here at 2-1, albeit shortly off the back of that. We do have a corner in our favour. Whitaker is on the ball, plays it back to Brishoff. We go far post there. The Wayne train does get his head on the end of that one, but unfortunately it goes well over the bar. So we are still down by two goals to one so far. Lots of highlights in this game, only just past the 35 minute mark. But so far not really doing a lot apart from that chance that we did get from the penalty spot. We'll try and demand more here just before halftime. Quite a few players out there on poor ratings. Kesler Hayden, Ilyev, and Callum Wright. But we do have a free kick here. A couple of minutes shy of halftime. Reese Williams will play it out to Kesler Hayden, but loose touch there. And Matoma can get on the ball for Brian and Hove Albion. Now Joe Gomez does get in behind. Big chance to try and curve that one top right corner. Thankfully, just puts that one off target. Yet again, though, they're getting in behind our defense a little bit too easily. So maybe need to go standard defensive line in these away games. Now, an interesting free kick routine here on the edge of the box. And Cullum Wright will rocket that one top right corner. Thankfully, he did because you would have thought Ilya there. We have tried to just put that one away straight from the dead ball situation because that was a really good position. Plays a short pass to Bischoff. Back to Ilya. And then Cullum Wright with a rocket gets lots of help from the underside of the bar. But thankfully, set piece so far working well for us. And we make it two all just shy of half time. And that will be the score going to the Sheds. It probably saves Callum Wright and Ilyev coming off at halftime as well because they were on some poor ratings up until that free kick. But somehow, despite the fact Brighton have well and truly been on the front foot so far in this game, it is locked up at two all. Off the back of that, though, we'll take off Kesler Hayden on a 6.4 at halftime. Richard Elise, the former Chelsea man who he picked up on a free, can come on for him. Also, we just adjust here some opposition instructions. But to be fair... Not really playing that well, but yet again showing some fight here. And we go into the second half of this Carabao Cup clash locked up at 2 all. We'll tell the guys we need to dig in here and hopefully we can show enough here to pick up something from the second round tie. That one change at halftime at least coming on for Kesler Hayden. And hopefully get on the front foot a little bit more in the second half like we have done in the past with this Gagan Press stolen out. Ilyev is down to a red heart and with an orange injury. So unfortunately going to be forced here into an early sub. In the second half, Facundo Farias, a little bit injury prone, so not ideal, but he can come on for the remainder of this game, and hopefully that might just give us a bit more quality as well, with him being the first team option in that central attacking midfield role. About 15 minutes into the second half, there is a highlight here. We are in position looking to make our way out from the back. Hausner is on the ball, plays that one for Cullum Wright off the back of that stunning goal. We'll get it back for us, we'll be at poor pass there, not too sure who that was from, and now Matoma does get in behind, but thankfully just puts that one wide. We nearly give them a goal there, but thankfully they don't take their chance. Very similar to a situation that happened in that prime Manchester United game. And just past the hour mark now, a couple of our players are down to Red Hearts, so it's time to make our last couple of subs here. Tony Springett can come on for Callum Wright. Also, we'll bring on Julio for Jacob Graves, and it will mean that Hausner can go to right back, and Richard Elise, he can go to left back, so a little bit of a shuffle around there at the back and also will chuck Elise onto support because he is definitely a better attacking threat wing back wise than a defensive one and as well as that Adam Randall is down to a red heart Rafael Mamas can come on him so that'll be all our subs used with 25 minutes left in this one also yet again adjusting some opposition instructions but off the back of that unfortunately this free kick to Brighton does still take place albeit that ball over the top is a bit long for Yao Pedro we'll see if this highlight will amount to anything hopefully Hazard can get us here on the front foot, and we might be able to grab a goal to put us in front here with around about 20 minutes left. Whitaker tries to win that one in the air. Randall does, but unfortunately, poor header forward and Brighton are on the ball. Anderson Taliska somehow keeps that one despite the efforts of Jacob Graves. They put that one into the mixer for Yale Pedro and they put it away. And unfortunately, those subs just go through a little bit late. Jacob Graves there come out to try and intercept that ball. Didn't quite get there, and from there, it was Anderson Taliska who gets on the front foot, gets in behind our defence from there. We're a bit stretched out, and Jao Pedro to be fair from a tight angle. Really good finish, that one, to beat Hazard at that far post and make it 3-2 off the back of that. will demand more and might even put some more players shortly on some more positive duties, but we do have a free kick, hopefully. Can you again get this one back to all square like we did a couple of times in the first half, albeit both of those times it was through dead ball situations. A penalty as well as a free kick, will be a nice routine. All that second goal that we did score to Callum Wright, but unfortunately, as we try and get on the attack there, we do give the ball away that time through Morgan Whitaker, and Brighton start to make their way towards our half. Now, Ferguson in behind our defence here, takes his time on the ball as we do start to readjust 
uh, shape and they play it to the back here to Brighton and go all the way back to the Bruggen and goal off the back of taking that 3 2 lead. But two makes his way into our half plays that one for Tumatoma in the high down defense. Far too easily squares it yet again for Yao Pedro this time on the other side. And those changes we made does just look like it's allowed Brighton to absolutely tear us apart here in the last couple of minutes of this game. And in the short space of time, they go from 2 all to 4 2 in front off the back of that. I think we need to get our guys to go a bit more attacking. So it'll be Richard Lease on attack. And we'll see if that does anything in these last 20 minutes. Because in a cup game, we definitely need a goal. And it is actually a highlight off the restart here. Hopefully, we can make it 4 3 at least. Interesting pass there from Williams. Thankfully, Mamas is alert enough to it to keep the ball. Now, Halsner in position starts to make his way forward these days as a right back. Did a decent job for us in that position sometimes last season. But unfortunately, he gets tangled up there with a fellow player in Brighton with big numbers forward here and a chance to do us. On the counter-attack, Dantas gets in behind. We'll take on the finish. Thankfully, this time, Connor Hazard comes up with a good save. And off the back of that, we might just go back to our higher defensive line because the B fear going standard that time doesn't seem to have worked. And also, we'll just tell our guys to play off a bit more attacking whip and see what that does. Also, yet again, trying to adjust some opposition instructions. But to be fair, might be a case now of too little too late. We'll see if the corner will still take place. Looks like it will. And we need two goals here at least. Inside the last 20 minutes to take this one to a penalty shootout. Don Tass on the ball puts that one in for Hal Gomez, who is on a hat trick. And they do keep the ball here just on the edge of the box. Patel makes his way into it, but thankfully the highlight does end off the back of that. We will go attacking. Lots of highlights in this game. And with 12 minutes left, Brighton yet again might be on the attack through the potential hat trick hero. In Jao Pedro makes his way forward down that right hand side. He's caused us all sorts of headaches in this game alongside Anderson Taliska, who does get in behind. He takes on a shot. It takes a wicked deflection from one of our defenders, and that will seal it for Brighton and Hove Albion. Not too sure who that was who tried to put that block in, but it was a big one because in the end, it did mean that Hazard had no chance of saving that one. It was Reese Williams, who to be fair, hasn't had the greatest start to life here at Plymouth Argyle, but we're going to get knocked out in our first game of the Carabao Cup. To be fair, Brighton, 11 shots on target. Hard to argue they don't deserve a win from this game. As you saw during the first half, they were the team who were doing a bit better than us. We got back into it through a penalty and a free kick. We'll just try there and lower our tempo to see if that might help late in this game for us to create some chances. But unfortunately, right in there with a chance. Thankfully, though, Hazard came up with a save, but it's not looking likely here. Looks like we'll be going out of the Carabao Cup early, albeit that might not be the worst thing for our hopes of Premier League survival. If that is the only competition we do need to focus on until January. But we are on the attack here. Elise tries to make his way forward. But unfortunately, Brighton, they win that one back again. Albeit Elise does quite well there to get the ball back for us. But fair to say, this has been a bit of a wake-up call. Our worst performance so far since we have come up to the Premier League. Albeit it is only in the Carabao Cup. Now a good chance there for the Wayne train to get on the score sheet. That would have been some consolation late. But unfortunately, we're blogging. Does save that one, albeit of course he did score the first goal from the penalty spots. So would have been a chance for him there to get on a hat trick, but unfortunately, good save there from the Brighton goalkeeper. And we do nothing from the subsequent corner. Hopefully, we can do something from this one. But we are going to be going out of the Carabao Cup a couple of rounds earlier than we did last season. Chance there from Halsner, but unfortunately, just puts that one over the bar. And that might be all she wrote in this one, albeit there's eight minutes of added time. Hopefully, the game soon will pull us out of our misery because this has been a pretty poor second half, albeit at least here might get a chance to get on the score sheet. But unfortunately, instead of maybe trying to square that one for spring it, he took the shot on himself, and it was a weak one, finding the hands of the Blugin. Still, the highlights continue in this game, even though it is well and truly over, with only two minutes of added time left. Patel is on the ball. It goes back in there for Taliska, squares that one nicely. For Pascal Gloss, I think that is, but thankfully, that one comes off the post. It is still only 5-2. Yet another chance for us here to grab another consolation goal through a corner to Facundo Farias. For some reason, taking his time over this one, even though we are three goals behind. Halsner yet again with a chance that time. It comes off the post, but unfortunately, just struggling here to put the ball in the back of the net to try and make it 5 3, at least with a loose touch. And Brighton will clear their lines. And I think that's going to be all she wrote finally in this one. There were many highlights. But in the end, we just didn't quite perform as well as we usually do in the second half off the back of getting a couple of lucky bounces in the first half. That Ben Wayne penalty and also quite a good free kick routine right on the stroke of halftime 
going to the sheds locked up at two all, but Yao Pedro tore us apart in that second half, and unfortunately, we are out of the Carabao Cup in our first game in the competition this season. It's a 5-2 defeat to Brighton. So unfortunately, we do get dumped out of the Carabao Cup there one round earlier than the board did expect, albeit against a team like Brighton, hopefully that won't be too much of a disappointment to them. As I said, actually did quite well to go into halftime there, locked up at two all, but unfortunately, from there, Jao Pedro in the second half, tore us a new one, especially once we brought on some of those more fringe players like Richard Elise in the second half, could definitely tell the difference between those first team players and the rotation ones in that game. It does mean some of those players now might struggle to get some game time unless there are injuries. Also, we did take Nikola Ilyev off early in the second half, but thankfully, nothing too serious. A bruised ankle, it does mean he will be available from the bench for our next game, a big one as well in the Premier League against Ipswich Town. That one on transfer deadline day, but as I said earlier, off the back of that signing of Phillips as our extra defensive midfielder. I don't think much will be happening because at the moment, we're over our wage budget and we've only got £154,000 and I can't actually get the wage budget into the positives. So that might be an issue for the rest of the season. Maybe need to take some funds from the scouting budget to fix that. But hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. Unfortunately, two losses when we took on Man United in the Premier League, then Brighton in the Carabao Cup. If you did enjoy it, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. We'll come back tomorrow. We're going to skip over the next couple of games, even though they could be quite big ones against teams who are struggling just a little bit. Ipswich Town on deadline day at home. That's a game I'm definitely targeting to win against the team who came up via the playoffs from the championship last season. Also, Everton are down in 19th. That one at Goodison Park. I'm hopeful we could get something out of that game as well. And we'll come back in late September. We'll take on the other team that came up from the championship last season in Leeds United. They're struggling as well. So hopefully that's a game we can win. And also, we'll host Manchester City. Can we keep Erling Haaland quiet for 90 minutes at home park? That will be a very interesting one to see how we get on against the strongest team on paper. In the Premier League, so we'll come back to that tomorrow also if anything does happen on deadline day, but it is looking unlikely, so don't expect that to be the case. But we'll come back tomorrow, take on Leeds and Manchester City, both at home park. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.